you've watched the first video in the series, you probably understand magic as a basic concept. If you don't, you can always go back and watch again. Now I want to talk about the most basic mechanic to the entire game. Being able to play your cards. So let's take a look at this card right here, Lightning Bolt. You see in the top right corner of the card how there's sort of this fireball symbol there? Well, that symbol represents red mana. What that means is that you need one red mana to cast that spell. Of course, there's symbols for other types of mana too. Green, white, blue, black, and yes, even colorless has its own symbol. It didn't always, but it does now. So, the thing that you're going to need, this isn't the only way to do it, mind you, but the main thing you're going to need in order to be able to play your cards, in order to be able to pay for that red mana, are lands. There are five different types of basic lands, and yes, I know there's a sixth one, but it doesn't have a type and normally isn't relevant anyway. Each of them depicting one of the five color symbols. Mountain for red, forest for green, plains for white, island for blue, and swamp for black. Unlike the other cards in your deck, you can use as many copies of any given basic land in your deck as you like. One thing you may have noticed when comparing our lightning bolt and our mountain is that the mountain doesn't have any symbols in the top right corner. That's because lands never require mana to play. You always get to play one on each of your turns. Of course, there are cards that are going to break this rule, either by putting lands directly into play, or by giving you the ability to play additional lands from your hand. Although, now that these two cards are on screen, you notice the number next to that green mana symbol there? That represents mana too, but it represents mana of any type you choose. So, I only need one mana from a forest in order to play this, but I need two more from other sources as well. Now, I'm sure you have plenty of questions regarding color, but I want to focus on the numbers for a second because this is going to be really important. You want to have cards that balance out how much they cost. Because if you have too many cards that cost a lot of mana, it doesn't fully matter how much of an effect they have on the game because of the fact that you're more likely to get beaten or get in a situation where that card suddenly doesn't really matter before you can play them. Conversely, if you have too many cards that don't cost very much, they're less likely to have a big impact. Thus, your opponent may be able to overwhelm you if the game goes too long. So, in order to be able to balance things out properly, you want to pay attention to what's called your mana curve, which is really important when it comes to deck building. It's something that I'm going to talk about a lot when it comes to deck building. The mana curve is basically a graph of how much the cards in your deck cost mana-wise. Of course, sometimes you also have to consider if you need other cards on the field in order to make a card work. But let's be honest, that tends to be very super complicated math stuffs, and uh, you know, not really something we need to cover at the moment. Although it'll vary from deck to deck, generally speaking, you want the majority of your cards to be either three or four mana, with the curve steadily going down on either side. If you drop off quickly, it's better to do so on the higher end of the curve than the lower. Mana curve also has a big effect on the lands that you play too. Normally, a deck is going to have either a third or two fifths or somewhere in between of lands. It's going to depend very much on your mana curve. If you have lots of expensive cards, you're going to want more lands to go with that. If you have lots of inexpensive cards, you're going to want fewer lands. I'm aware that that's a lot to digest. So I'm going to end the video here. And in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about colors. I'm going to talk about more about determining what colors you may need in your deck in terms of lands. And I'm going to go a little bit more in depth on that mana curve. Until next time. Catch you later.